in theaters now is a new horror film entitled Skinamarink. This is uh, an indie horror based on a short film entitled Heck, which is viewable on YouTube. And this might have been the worst film I've ever seen in a theater. Possibly. Now, I'm not saying I haven't seen films that I didn't enjoy less, that I might have enjoyed less than Skinamarink, but when you combine the, the pacing and, uh, let's say, visual style of Skinamarink, it places itself far ahead or below of other films that I, I had a miserable experience watching in the theater. So, uh, what is Skinamarink? You may well ask yourself after you see it. Uh, Skinamarink is a horror film. It's a horror film in which the camera is kind of always not pointing at whatever is going on in the film. It kind of feels like the tripod was broken, the, the tilt function of the tripod was broken, and it was either in the all the way up or the all the way down position. You look at the, a lot of, uh, it's all, it all takes place at night inside a house. Two little kids are in the house and they, they wake up in the middle of the night and something is amiss. And you never really see the kids. I think you might see a foot once in a while or a shoulder. Uh, you, you don't really see the people in this movie. You, maybe at one point you do, but not really quite so much. Uh, the audio is, is horrendous. It is so muffled. The sound design is so muffled that the, the, the dialogue is more often than not subtitled. Uh, it's, it's shot, I believe, on 16 millimeter, very grainy 16 millimeter, mostly way underlit, so you're looking more at the grain than you are anything else. And again, you're, you're more often than not look, <laughs> looking at the corner of a table, uh, looking at shot close-ups of Legos on the floor, looking at close-ups of a TV screen playing old public domain cartoons, uh, but it's so overexposed, all you really kind of see is white. Uh, it's really, uh, it's very unusual. It's, uh, I have to give credit to the filmmakers that they got this movie into theaters in theater chains, AMCs, Alamos, I saw it in an Alamo. And apparently the ad campaign is very effective. It's got some pull quotes saying some nonsense about the scariest film I've ever seen, the scariest film in, in years. Uh, they, maybe they said the scariest film of the year, in which case, as I record this, that's you've only got 18 days to choose from of scary movies. Uh, but boy, this was, this was not a movie for me. This was one that as I watched it, I said, I'm sure there will be people who call this film brilliant. I'm sure they will tell anybody with a contrary opinion that they just don't get it, uh, or that's what it's supposed to be. But my God, uh, I know some people have said they thought this was a scary and effective film. I think, and in discussing this after we saw it, I had to keep saying, wait, okay, how much of this are you, are you writing? How much of this are, are we, the audience, doing the work for the filmmakers? Because there's so little to this. They give you little, little, little happenings once in a while, and then extremely long stretches of nothing, not looking at anything, uh, weird sounds. It's very people have referred to this as an experimental film. They've referred to it as is like a David Lynch movie. I can see that the whole time I'm watching it. I've just kept feeling like this feels like a short film. This feels like a student film or a film that might be in a film festival. And I, in the end, I said, you know, that might have worked for the tone maybe as a five or 10 minute short. As I mentioned at the top of this, uh, I, I did find out in reading online that there originally was a short called Heck, available on YouTube, and that's about 28 minutes. And I actually sat down today, earlier today, to watch Heck, to see what that was like, and to be able to come back and tell you, just watch Heck instead. I honestly couldn't get through more than a minute or two of Heck, because it's the exact same thing. Heck is probably better I would say, see, I wouldn't say go watch Heck first if you really think you want to see this. Seriously, go see this in a theater if you think you want to see this. But just understand, it's like paranormal activity without any sense of forward motion or any sense of being able to see what's going on. It's, it's, you're really, I almost thought about also shooting this review of just my voiceover muffled with, you know, a little bit of the drapes and a little bit of the floor and a piece of something that's on the ground. It's... It's a rough ride. Like I was with it for a while and then I realized, oh God, it's, it's, it's just gonna be this for a long time and you're gonna be straining your eyes to see what's going on and you're gonna be straining your ears to hear or understand what's being said and try to figure out what exactly is going on. Now, in discussion after the film at home, uh, we, we came up with a story, might have been intended, might not, that explained what was going on 
And if I think back, I'm like, well, yeah, that, that moment was effective in terms of mood and uh, the story might have been like that and that's kind of an interesting, that's kind of a creepy idea. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm doing that now. I'm trying to put it all together now. When I was in the theater, I was bored out of my mind. When I was in the theater, I was just annoyed. And to me, that's what has to count. A lot of people will see things and say, you know, the more I thought about it, blah, blah. I'm like, no, no, you're, 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 you're doing a disservice to your past self who was not having a good time with this film. And uh, boy, I really, beware, beware of Skinema Rink. It is not what it looks like from advertising. Now, if you're into weird experimental, uh, long form mood pieces that just sort of put you in a mood or a trance, then maybe this is the film for you. I have heard, I've seen people say they really liked it. I saw somebody, God help him, who said they saw it two or three times already. I cannot imagine experiencing this film again. I, I get what they were going for, and I, I could see in my mind ways that it would have worked for me, but boy, Again, kudos to the filmmakers for getting this in a theater, getting a major release for this film. But this is, a lot of people are gonna be disappointed by this movie. I think, you know, apparently it's done very well commercially this weekend, but I think that's mostly word of mouth and viral buzz and ad campaign because it'll be compared to Blair Witch, it'll be compared to Paranormal Activity, but you could see the people in those films. You could see what was going on in those films you could kind of understand what was going on in those films. This film is more at best, this film is tone. Uh, there's a very creepy moment in, in, a, in the bedroom, in a bedroom at one point, but even then it just kind of seems to go nowhere. And then occasionally you get the jump scare. The jump scare, which is the biggest hack move that exists. I, some people like them, but I think it's bogus. What I always say about jump scares, jump scares aren't legit because they are a physical reaction to a stimulus. If I tickle you and you laugh, does that mean you thought it was funny? You, had, you couldn't control it. So if a movie just suddenly, bah! if a movie just suddenly makes a loud noise and something pops out at you, it's a cheat. It's cheap. It's, 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 a, it's a cheap thrill. It's not legit to me. Uh, and this film did that a bunch of times where there's a whole lot of nothing going on. Now, there were moments where incredible tension built up, built up because you had seen those jump scares before and you thought another one was coming and it didn't. And that really did effectively ratchet up the tension. And the fact that this was shot in really, way underlit and super grainy, there were moments, um, unintentional moments, where I found myself sort of, maybe it was intentional, staring into the grain and wondering, is there something in there? And something happens later in the film that really works with that, where it is so grainy and something sort of Something changes in, in a static shot, and you're not quite sure if you've seen it, and you're not. it sort of makes you question whether you saw anything at all. Um, that was interesting. I kind of wish they had worked more with that, but because this was so low budget, apparently shot in the house that the filmmaker or filmmakers grew up in, um, they didn't. I don't believe they had a heck of a lot in the way of visual effects going on in this film. I don't know. I, it's, it was really just a, a gigantic wank to me. I thought this was a huge waste of my time. It's about, it's, it runs at about 100 minutes, and I must say again, I, I didn't watch it because I tried and I was having flashbacks and I couldn't get through it. H-E-C-K, heck, the original short this was based on, which is on YouTube, and if you have a smart TV, you can watch that on your TV. Uh, probably best watched in the dark, too, because I was trying to watch this during the day, and again, it's so dimly lit and so grainy, I couldn't make anything out that was going on, and it also does the whole muffled sound with subtitles thing, but I, my guess is that Heck probably presents the same, the same tone and style in a much more concise manner that doesn't cost you 10 or 20 bucks <laughs> in two hours of your life. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know, uh, uh, leave comments or, or send me a message or something. I know there are people who are gonna love this movie. There are people who are gonna think I'm an idiot because I didn't get it and I have no patience and all that. I got a lot of patience and I got a lot of experience and I've watched a lot of really, really bad stuff. But again, as far as a theatrical experience goes, this was this has to be one of the worst because I can't even say, you know, I've been, I've been to very competent movies that were boring, but at least I had something visually competent to look at. And in this, it's just, you're barely ever looking at anything. So uh, in theaters now, for probably a limited time, uh, then it's, it was uh, co-presented by Shudder, so this will eventually be on Shudder, uh, is Skinema Rink.